Hello everyone. Um, welcome along to our webinar today on introductory videos and demo lessons. Um, it's great to see so many of you tuned in already. Um, thank you so much for taking time out of your busy weekends um, to spend some time with us today. Um, my name is Mairead and I've been with the TEFL Academy since 2015. Um, I've been teaching for nearly 20 years now and a lot of that has been online. So hopefully I'll have some good tips to give you today. Um, as always, we will have a questions and answers session at the end. Yeah, like the last 25 or 30 minutes will be a big old Q&A session. So um, if you've questions about anything that I say during the presentation, please pop them into the chat box. Yeah, you don't have to wait till the end to put in your questions, just keep them Keep them coming and at the end I'll just run through all of the comments and pick out your questions. Um, so um, as I said my name is Mairead and I am in Ireland and it's a beautiful day today. Um, this gives me joy, we don't get too many beautiful days. <laughs> um, I can see from the comments that you are all in countries with much nicer weather or a lot of you are in countries with a lot nicer weather. Um, so hello to South Africa, Italy, Portugal, Ah, we have a good spread of people. I see the UK. Okay, guys, you kind of suffer the same terrible weather as we do across the sea. Um, so without further ado, let's get going. And remember, pop in those questions to the chat box as we go along. All right. So today, as I said, we are going to speak about how to create your introductory video and as an added bonus, how to approach demo lessons. So you're probably wondering what I mean by this. Okay, what is an introductory video and what is a demo lesson? Well, if you plan on teaching online, there is a huge likelihood that you will be asked to produce an introductory video and a demo lesson, a short demo lesson. Um, there are a couple of reasons for this, why online schools and platforms require this. Um, companies and schools, they want to see your teaching style. Okay, Remember, you're teaching online. It's not like you can pop into their office and do a face-to-face -face interview. Um, so introductory videos and demo lessons are the online school's way to see your teaching style, um, to gauge your lesson planning abilities, and to see your professionalism in action. OK, um, so you will ha also have an interview. Yeah, that would be like the um, at the beginning of the process, you'll get, you'll get an interview. And if the school or company wishes to proceed with you, then you'll be asked um, to produce your introductory video and demo lesson. OK, so there still will be a, an interview. Don't worry about that. <laughs> um, and then for students, well, Looking at your introductory video um, is a way to see your personality and to hear your accent, to see your manner of communication. Um, you know, it's a way to attract students to book you for lessons. All right. So introductory videos are all about winning either employers or prospective students over. OK, um, so as you can imagine, they are very, very important. And it's crucial that you do a good one, okay, in order to get hired, yeah, either by an online school or um, prospective students. So let's get into the nuts and bolts of introductory videos. Now, the good news is they are short, yeah. But also, I guess the bad news is they are short. <laughs> um, two minutes, you know, it's not a long time to, to get a lot of important information into. OK, so on the one hand, it's not too daunting. But on the other hand, it can be hard to cram everything in. Um, I would say, yeah, maximum two minutes. OK, um, that said, the school or online platform may have their own rules on that. Like I have worked for schools that wanted a three minute introductory video. Um, I mean, wow, that extra minute, you know, it made all the difference. <laughs> um, but, you know, typically what I see is two minutes. And if you're applying to um, an online platform, 
um, to market yourself as a freelance teacher, okay, I would say stick to the two minutes, okay? If it's a few seconds shorter or a few seconds longer, not the end of the world, but two minutes is good to aim for, I think is the ideal time. Um, so what sort of information should you include in your introductory video? Well, obviously your name, okay? Um, just your first name or first name and surname, you know, it's up to you. Um, so include your name, where you're from, okay? Give the students a little background, okay? They like to know who they're dealing with, okay? And it also helps to build some rapport even before you start teaching them, okay? Because they already know a little bit about you. Maybe they know a little bit about the country that you're from. Maybe they're interested in that country and they want to ask you questions, okay? So by giving them this, in, this information in the introductory video, you know, you are already creating a connection with them or you're putting the chance for a connection out there, okay? Um, you know, if you've lived in different countries, mention that, okay? Give a brief little synopsis. Um, you know, students will like to know that their teacher, you know, has knowledge of the world. Maybe they've traveled a bit. If you haven't, not to worry. Yeah, like, honestly, it's not a big deal. But if you have, why not mention it, okay? Build up that um, image of yourself, yeah, as a person who is used to traveling, used to languages, more importantly, used to dealing with people from other countries. Yeah, that would all be super helpful. Um, also, you've got to give, you know, a nice chunk of time over to your TEFL background and relevant experience. So in your introductory video, make it crystal clear that you do have a recognized TEFL qualification, as you all will at the end of this course. OK, um, that will set you apart from a lot of um, teachers who, you know, advertise themselves as English language teachers, but are not qualified. OK, so make sure the first thing you do in the um, TEFL section and relevant information um, section is state that you do have a recognized level five or level three TEFL certificate. OK, that's really important. Um, also, if you have a background in TEFL already, yeah, absolutely mention that. It doesn't matter if it happened before you got your qualification. Yeah, what matters is you detail any TEFL experience you have had. Um, it doesn't have to be like formal employment. It could be that you tutored, um, you know, you tutored some um, kids at school. It could be that you volunteered as an English tutor. Um, you know, any experience you have had with teaching English, um, please mention it. Yeah, students will like to know that you have experience. Um, again, it can all be from before you qualified with your TEFL cert. That's not a problem, but do mention it if you have a TEFL background of any type. Um, if you don't, not to worry, okay? We all have to start somewhere right? You know, you have your qualification, you're ready to go. Um, so if you don't have any specific TEFL experience, you can mention any teaching experience that you've had, any type of coaching, any type of training. Um, you know, maybe you taught music, yeah? Maybe you coached sports, okay? Um, you know, maybe you ran tutoring groups at university, yeah? Teaching is teaching, OK, so even if you don't have any relevant TEFL experience, by all means, mention any relevant teaching experience. Um, you know, I always feel that at the end of the day, teaching is teaching. OK, sure, the subject and the content differs. Yeah, but the principles of teaching, they're pretty universal. Um, so please mention any teaching experience that you might have. Um, if you don't have any teaching experience, be it of English or anything, um, you can still mention any relevant experience. Um, for example, if you have any experience working in customer service or in hospitality, you know, that is very, very relevant. You just need to talk about all of those lovely transferable skills that you can bring to teaching. Um, for example, um, dealing with the public. 
yeah um, helping people solve problems okay communicating with people from other countries um, dealing with cross-cultural communication yeah um, maybe you've worked in business on the planning and strategy side in which case super relevant because you know you will be doing a lot of planning a lot of organizing as teachers um, so you know if you have no teaching experience of any kind just you know think back think back to all of the transferable skills that you can mention yeah from other jobs that you might have done okay um so if you do happen to have a tefl background of some sort um, or any teaching experience in general um, you can elaborate on that you can mention things like the level and age of the students you taught okay like um maybe you volunteered with kids or maybe you um, tutored um, an adult student okay make sure you mention the ages of the people that you have taught okay and the level like if you specifically taught English you know you can say I taught intermediate adults or I taught an elementary young learner okay you know the more information the more specific information you can give the more reassured that your prospective employers or students will feel okay um, so yeah get into the detail in you know as much as you can in two minutes um, as I said you can also mention any other subjects you have taught be it art music drama okay science anything okay teaching is teaching remember and I always think it's nice to mention why you are interested in EFL teaching as a career. Okay, like what is it that has led you to want to be an EFL teacher? Um, what do you love about it? Okay, um, that's a really engaging way to draw students in, yeah, or to draw prospective employers in. Okay, let them see that you are passionate about it. Okay, that you have a strong desire to do it. That will always win people over, okay, to want to attend your classes. Okay, so you've done your introductory video, okay? Now, your introductory video will be going either to an online school or you'll be posting it on an online freelance site, okay? Um, your introductory video is, you know, the biggest tool in your arsenal, okay? That is the way you are going to win students over. Um, so make sure that it's as good as it can be. Um, you will be recording your introductory video yourself, okay? Um, so, you know, maybe you'll be recording it um, from your smartphone. Um, I often find sometimes well, I often find, not sometimes, often, <laughs> that um, smartphones will take a better quality video than recording from your laptop will. So, you know, consider how you're going to record your introductory video. Um, don't discount your cell phone. Yeah, maybe invest in a tripod. Yeah, um, put your smartphone on it and, you know, talk straight to the phone. Um, get someone to help you, to record you. And you will often find that that's a better quality video than your laptop, okay? Um, because you're recording it yourself, that also means you get the chance to edit it, okay? So if you want to get some editing software, yeah, there's lots of free stuff online, lots of free software. Um, if you Google video editing, um, you know, make it the best that it can be, okay? Um, you know, there's a ton of software out there that you can get for free that will help you um, to edit or to, you know, sharpen up the audio, to sharpen up the visuals. Um, so make sure to use whatever you can, uh, whatever you can access. Yeah, make that introductory video as good as it can be. Um, there's also a really fun tool you can use, um, a teleprompter. Um, again, there are tons of online teleprompters where you can just copy and paste your script into it, um, pop it on your laptop, yeah, 
behind your smartphone as you're recording. And you know, that will keep you on track. It'll make sure that you get through all of your points and you don't forget any, any of the vital stuff. Um, you know, preparation is key with your introductory video. Okay, that's basically what I'm trying to say. All right, um, if you have any questions about the introductory video, pop them in the chat box and we'll get to them at the end. Okay, so imagine you've recorded your introductory video. Yeah, it's looking amazing. Um, then you find out that you have one more pretty important thing to do. Um, for online schools and online platforms, they will almost always, 99% of the time, ask you for a demo lesson. Um, so this is essentially you pretending, well, in some cases pretending to teach, in some cases actually teaching, um, some students, okay? So that the online school can see how you would be yeah, in front of a class. Um, now, some online schools will give you real life students to teach as a demo lesson. So, you know, that's quite fun, <laughs> um, perhaps a bit daunting. Um, so it's a possibility that you might have real life students, but it's more than likely that you will not. OK, um, schools will just ask you for maybe a five or six minute video. Yeah, they will give you some material and they will ask you to pretend that you're teaching it. OK, so in other words, you'll be teaching the lesson, but there won't be any students there. So you'll be, you know, pretending that you're getting student responses. Um, you know, you'll be pretending that you're addressing a class full of students, but in reality, it will be just you. Um, so, you know, that can be quite a strange concept to get your head around. Um, but trust me, it is super common in the world of online teaching. OK, I guarantee you will be asked to do a demo lesson at some stage or another if you go teaching online. Um, so in your online lesson, your online demo lesson, because you more than likely won't have any students actually in front of you, yeah, on the screen, you need to rely very, very heavily on facial expressions, body language, gestures, and props, okay? Um, especially if you're teaching young learners, which a lot of online teaching does cater for, um, you find yourself using a lot of props that are easy to work with. Um, like maybe you'll have some hand puppets, maybe some finger puppets. Um, you know, you'll have a lot of little pictures like happy face, sad face. Yeah, you'll have maybe um, some stars, you know, for a reward chart. Um, you might have some toys. Yeah, maybe some some teddies, maybe some um, toy furniture, toy food, etc. cetera. Um, you know, your demo lessons are all about you showing that you can engage students. All right. Um, so don't be afraid to bring in props. OK, maybe bring in some posters. Yeah. Um, use whatever you think would be engaging for your students. OK, you need to show your potential employers that you can do that. OK. <laughs> Um, when you're planning your demo lesson, um, one big tip, um, when you're doing it or recording it, don't obscure your face. Um, I know I've said that, you know, you can bring in a ton of props like puppets, pictures, um, face, you know, faces, pictures of faces, maybe toys. Um, but be really, really careful that you don't hold stuff in front of your face. OK, um, you know all students see is your face, okay, in an online setting, pretty much. So don't do anything that's going to cover you, cover you up, okay. Um, and, you know, that can be quite tough sometimes, like you have this amazing idea for a prop you want to use, but, you know, it can be tricky figuring out how it's going to fit on screen. Um, that can be all part of the planning process too, Okay, just figuring out where am I going to hold this thing so that I'm, I'm not covering up my face or my mouth. Okay, it's, yeah, these are the things we need to think about. Um, when it comes to the demo lesson, um, 
in all likelihood, you will be given a level topic and or language structure to teach. Yeah. So the online school will tell you, I need you to do a five minute demo on how you would teach the present perfect to intermediate adults. You know, um, in all likelihood, you will get a brief. OK, but if you don't and if you're just, you know, marketing yourself online as a freelance teacher, um, then you get to choose what your what the topic of your demo lesson will be. OK, so again, pros and cons. Personally, I always liked to get a brief. OK, it helped me focus my mind. But, you know, if you do have the opportunity to create your own demo lesson on whatever point you want, um, I would say just choose something that you feel comfortable with. All right. Um, demo lessons are short, you know, they could be like five, six minutes. OK, more than likely five. Um, so, you know, don't expect to cover a whole ton of information by any means. You know, that's not possible in five minutes. Um, so if you're choosing your own structure, maybe pick one aspect of a tense or just choose two or three words of vocabulary. Okay, Don't try to cram in too much into your demo lesson. And yeah, just pick a topic that you are comfortable with. That's probably the main thing. Um, more tips for planning a demo lesson. Have a plan. Okay. You know, it can be tempting to think, oh, it's only five minutes or it's only three words or it's only one tiny aspect of a tense. You know, how hard can it be? Well, do not fall into that trap. OK, you have got to have a plan for every step of your demo. OK, remember, this is like your audition. OK, it needs to be the best it can be. Um, so plan everything. Um, choose simple materials and activities. OK. Um, research your topic. Again, make sure it's something you're comfortable with. Um, or if it's a topic that an online school has given you, well, research whatever that topic is. Um, make sure you know it inside out. Um, if it's a grammar lesson, um, try to bear in mind the PPP structure that you will encounter on this course. OK, um, in case you haven't come to that yet, um, PPP is a way of teaching grammar. Um, the first P stands for present. OK, this is where you explain the language. Um, the second P stands for practice. Um, you give students an opportunity to um, work with the language to improve their accuracy. And the third P stands for produce. And this is where you give them the opportunity um, to do a speaking activity. Um, which gives them a natural context to use the new language in. Um, so normally a PPP lesson could be like in real life, it could be from 45 minutes to an hour, even 90 minutes. OK, obviously your demo lesson, um, you're only probably going to have um, five minutes, maybe six. Um, so you won't get through all of the P's <laughs> or anything like it. Um, but what you can do is focus on the really teacher intensive stage, which is the first P, the presentation. Um, so in your demo lesson, you might do a very short warmer, OK, to get students thinking about the topic. And then you would just run through how you would elicit um, a model sentence and how you would elicit the meaning, the form and how you would concept check. OK. Um, so, you know, you're really condensing the warmer and the presentation stage. Um, again, in real life, you would go into more detail because you would have more time. But yeah, think about condensing it, but still showing the prospective school or students that you know how to do the fundamentals, which is eliciting meaning, form and phonology. OK. Um, as always, as with everything in life and any type of teaching, um, have a backup plan in case things go wrong. Um, if you are teaching real students in your demo lesson, yeah, have a backup just in case. Um, in a lot of ways, it's much easier to be pretending um, to teach a class because then you control the narrative entirely. OK, um, you know, you 
imagine the responses you would like to get and you carry on. Okay. Um, so before recording your demo, um, now the demo could be recorded or it could be live. Yeah, each school is different. Um, but if you are recording it, make sure you do a run through of your lesson beforehand. Okay, practice it tons of times. Okay, actually, even if it's a live lesson, yeah, practice it. Do lots of run throughs. Try not to let your um, demo lesson in front of the employer or the student be the first time that you have taught your lesson. Okay. It should be maybe, you know, the fourth or fifth or sixth time <laughs> you have run through it. Um, preparation is key. Um, if you have family members or friends around, do it in front of them. Okay. Let them critique you or let them give you answers. For example, let them be the students. If you don't have anyone to practice in front of, or if it makes you too nervous to practice in front of people, um, practice in front of a mirror. Yeah, literally pop them, you know, stand in front of your mirror and deliver your lesson. Okay. Um, I used to find that really helpful because I discovered that um, I had a tendency to be quite serious um, doing demo grammar lessons when I was doing my presentation. Um, and, you know, looking at myself in a mirror, I noticed my facial expressions. I noticed, you know, I looked quite, quite formal, a little stiff. Um, and, you know, that prompted me to loosen up a bit, um, you know, be more, um, be more engaging. Yeah. Brighten up my facial expressions, etc. Um, so practicing in front of a mirror is surprisingly useful. OK. Um, so in other words, just practice beforehand. Make sure you have it down before you record it or before you do it in front of your prospective employer. Um, in terms of technology, because, you know, we're dealing with online teaching here, um, it's really important that you find a stable Internet connection. OK, um, I have always found that when I interview with online schools or when I have done it in the past, in the interview stage, they always ask you to do a speed test. OK, so they will get you to download some software and get you to screenshot your upload and your download speed. Um, you know, it's pretty obvious why they do this. OK, they need to know that your Internet will be fast enough um, to ensure a smooth teaching um, environment. So, um, you know, make sure you do that speed test in the place that you will be teaching from, okay? Because you will be found out pretty quickly if your internet speed is not fast enough. Um, if you are recording your demo lesson yourself, um, make sure you have an appropriate app to record your video. Um, you know, maybe you, might, you could use Zoom or StreamYard or Google Meet. Yeah, it doesn't matter, but make sure you have an app that you're comfortable using to record your demo lesson. Um, work out all of your angles, position your laptop. Yeah, look straight at the camera. You know, make sure everything is um, all lined up and ready to go. OK, um, if you're using a headset or a microphone, make sure it all works. Um, there is nothing worse than, you know, completing your demo lesson and thinking, oh, that went well, and then realizing that, you know, you can't, you know, they couldn't hear your voice or your microphone was muted or your headset was broken. Okay, There is literally nothing worse. So make technology checks part of your planning process. Um, other aspects to consider could be checking your lighting. Um, make sure that the room is bright enough. Make sure you're clearly visible. There aren't any distracting shadows. Um, make sure there isn't any substantial glare on the screen. Um, again, consider wearing a headset. You know, we all have, you know, noisy neighbors. We all have other people in our houses. We may have animals, pets. Um, so try to find a way to minimize that disruption. Um, especially for your demo lesson, you know, just for those five minutes, try to keep things quiet in the background. Um, check your microphone, check your volume. You know, all of the basic things that you would do um, whenever you're working online. 
Um, in terms of facial expression and body language, um, remember when you're online teaching, your face is all they see, okay? It's all about transmitting your personality and your enthusiasm and your energy, yeah, through that screen. Um, show your personality, okay? Exaggerate it perhaps, especially if you're teaching young kids. Um, your demo needs to show off your fun-loving and energetic personality. Okay, again, especially if you're teaching young kids. Even if you're nervous, fake it till you make it. Okay, big smile, positivity, um, you know, be the teacher that you would have liked to have had yourself. Um, so yeah, a smile. Uh, try not to move around too much. Okay, look directly at the camera whenever possible. Try to speak clearly and slightly slower than normal. Um, especially if you're teaching low level students. Yeah, you know, keep the keep the energy in your voice, but you know, slow it down. All right. Um, be mindful just as you would in a face to face classroom. In terms of background, well, I think this is pretty obvious, but let's run through some tips. Um, Try to find a quiet, well-lit room with brightly colored back with lightly colored background. Okay. Um, try to avoid distractions. Yeah. Try to avoid open windows or flapping curtains or blinds behind you. Okay. Um, because you know they will catch your student's eye or your employer's eye, and it will distract them from what you're saying. Um, if you don't have a suitable um, wall to position yourself in front of. You can always create artificial backgrounds using Zoom, Google Meet, etc. Um, just be aware that these artificial backgrounds, they can consume more bandwidth than if you're not using them. So try them out in advance and make sure that they don't destabilize your internet connection or that they don't slow things down too much. Um, tr again, try to keep the noise to a minimum. Okay, so, you know, warn everyone downstairs to keep it down um you know turn off the music try to minimize animal noise etc um also in terms of background if you're teaching young learners it can be really nice to have some educational posters um or maybe some you know toys in the background or books in the background you know it's not to say that your background always needs to be empty yeah you can gauge the suitability of your background depending on the age of the people that you're teaching um, for kids i might be inclined to make it a bit brighter put up some posters yeah make it look appealing okay um so yes colorful educational posters and maybe some props maybe a teddy bear yeah maybe some puppets um, could be useful to make your video more engaging for young learners all right, so just before we finish up and jump into our questions, let's give a very short um, word on clothing and makeup. So I would say when you have your interview with your online, your prospective online employer, ask them, okay, how would you like me to present myself in the video? Okay, you know, do I need to wear a shirt? Um, do I need to look more formal if it's for adults? You know, depending on the cultures, they might expect their teachers to look more formal. Or if it's for kids, you know, can you wear a brightly colored T-shirt? Can you go more casual? OK, these are the questions to ask in your interview, just to make sure that you get it right. Um, your clothing should be appropriate for your target audience. Um, there are a lot of demo lessons on YouTube. OK, so if you're not sure, check out a couple of a couple of demo lessons and see what the teachers were wearing and how it came across. Um, try to avoid too much jewelry. Um, you know, it tends to get kind of um, busy in the light. Yeah, it might show up as wavy or it might be glinting. Yeah, it might just generally be distracting. So try to keep it minimal. Um, if you want to wear makeup, by all means, go ahead. Um, but again, just test how it looks on screen. Yeah, beforehand, you know, check that you're not coming out super pale or shiny or, you know, 
just check it out in advance because cameras can do strange things to people, <laughs> to people's appearance, especially when it comes to makeup. Um, so once you have all of that under control, yeah, once you've planned your demo and once you've prepped your background, you're looking fantastic, you've recorded, you've done everything you possibly can, um, it is then time to share your demo lesson with either your prospective online employer or post it on the online freelance platform that you want to use. Um, always consider how you're going to share your video. Um, normally demo lessons, you know, recordings, they get really big, okay? They can often be too big to send directly through email. Um, so what I always like to do is upload um, my demo video to YouTube or to Google Drive, to Dropbox, to OneDrive, whatever yeah, your, your storage solution is. Um, upload it, keep it safe, and then all you need to do is email the link to your demo video to your prospective employer. Okay, um, that just solves all the problems of files being too big to be sent through email, getting lost, getting rejected, etc. Okay, so yeah, personally, I put everything on Google Drive. It helps keep me organized. You know, I always have those demo lessons if I need them again. Um, so yeah. I would advise you to do the same. And yeah, good luck. I mean, I know that's a lot of information and it seems like it's a really difficult process. Um, honestly, it's not, okay? Once you can think of all of the things we've talked about, you know, it will go smoothly for you. And I have no doubt, but that you'll do a fabulous job. So good luck. Don't be scared of it. Jump right in and do it. Preparation is key. All right. So, questions. <laughs> I've seen the chat box ticking over. I haven't had a chance to look at it yet, um, but I'm gonna hop on over to chat box and I will go through all of your questions in the order that they appear, okay? You can still keep typing them in though. We have loads of time. We have 25 minutes to get through as many as we can. All right. So we have France, we have Germany, we have England. Lovely. Okay. Um, so hello, Hector. I'm still on unit two in my course. Is that normal? Um, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. You know, work through the units in order. Um, all of this um talk of demo lessons and intro videos will be super super helpful once you get once you finish the course and start job hunting okay um so we're just going to focus on questions um related to the topic today any other questions related to course content send a ticket to choose your support okay um we will be more than happy to help you on choose your support. Okay, gosh, okay, this is a lot of chat going on, guys. You know, no problem at all, but it's just taking me a moment to find the questions <laughs> in between um, all of the chat. Okay. Um, let me see. Okay. Um, so Lisa Marie, you have answered my question. Amazing. I was going to ask about whether the demo lesson was live or a recording. Yeah, it could be either. You know, it totally depends on the, the employer that you have um, applied to. Okay. You know, they will all have their different rules. Okay. Um, let's see. Do we have questions related to the topic? Um, so, Hector, I would advise that you send your tickets to choose your support, okay? They are best served to help you. Okay. Um, no, Diana, not rude at all. I understand. It's, it's exciting to meet other students on the course. Um, again, it's just taking me a time, to taking me a while to find the relevant questions. Um, 
Okay, so Anger Prof, um, is this video available to rewatch if I save on YouTube? Um, yeah, absolutely. So all you need to do is go along to our YouTube channel, our TEFL Academy YouTube channel, and all of the videos will be there. Okay, all of the webinars going back years. Okay, um, so yeah, go to the TEFL Academy YouTube channel. Um, so today is Saturday, right? So this video will be posted Monday or Tuesday, okay, early next week, and it will be there um, for you to watch. Okay, so hello, next stop, next stop Thailand. Um, what about green screen? Um, yeah, why not? I mean, if you have access to one, and then you can create your own backgrounds. Um, yeah, absolutely. That could be really fun. The possibilities are endless in that case. Okay. Um, so, hello, Larisha. Is it better to submit a demo video saying you want to do freelance teaching to build up experience? Um, well, I guess you mean here, Larisha, the online platforms like maybe Preply, or Fiverr, you know, where you just, you don't go through a school, you just advertise yourself as freelance and work with students directly. Um, yeah, absolutely. I mean, an introductory video would be the first thing you would do, but you could absolutely upload a demo lesson too. I mean, I think it would be really, really nice for students to see more of your teaching style, more of your personality. So, while it may not be strictly um, necessary to do a demo lesson for the online freelance platforms, it certainly won't do any harm. Okay. Um, yeah, I would still recommend doing one. If you're going through a school, through an online school, though, yeah, you will definitely need to do a demo lesson. Okay. Thank you for your question. Okay. Um, Mads, hello. Are there recommended places to work from the TEFL Academy? I don't think I'm far enough in the process to create a video, an intro video yet. Um, so no, Mads, you know, we are not, um, we don't tend to recommend any schools in particular. Okay. Um, I mean, personally, I could only recommend the schools that I have worked for. You know, I would not, um, I would not make recommendations about schools that I haven't personally worked for. And, you know, that goes for all of us. So um, in that case, we tend not to recommend particular schools. Um, what we do recommend is that you do all of your research yourself. Yeah, do as much research as you can into the school you want to work for or into prospective employers and make your decisions from there. OK, research is key. Um, I would say, Mads, yeah, you know, you don't need to think about intro videos or anything until you have your qualification and you are ready to actively start looking for online work. OK, so, you know, don't worry about it yet. Cross that bridge when you come to it. Um, focus on finishing your certificate and then you can go to our YouTube channel, rewatch this video and hit the ground running. Okay. And um, so, hello again, Angela Prof. Do you have a rough idea of the minimum download and upload speeds most schools need? Um, oh, great question, Anglo. I actually don't remember. I'm afraid. Um, I do not remember. I'm really sorry. I'm sure if you Google it, though, you know, you will find an answer to that. Um, it does need to be quite stable though okay that i do remember um it was slightly higher um than say the normal speed um but again that is not very helpful because i don't remember the exact numbers <laughs> okay but in the interview for in the interview process they will let you know all of those details um okay so diana um, Mairead, do you have a demo of how to do a model demo? Oh, great question. Um, so, um, unfortunately, I don't have any props with me um, for that, but um, okay, let's, let's 
Now, I know I said you need to plan your demos and you do, but just for you, Diana, I'll, I'll give it a go. <laughs> um, so imagine, let me make myself bigger. Okay, so imagine you are giving a demo lesson to young learners, okay? Um, your school has asked you to introduce yourself, um, to show how you would introduce yourself to a class of young learners, okay? So you might do something like, so, hello everyone, hello, my name is Mairead, okay? My name is Mairead. And you, what's your name? Ah, thank you. So my name is Mm -hmm. And your name is, thank you. So that is a very brief demo, Diana. <laughs> um, but, you know, that's the type of thing you'll be doing if you don't have real students in your demo lesson. OK, um, you'll essentially be pretending that there are students on the other side of the screen. But in reality, they are. There aren't. Um, so you can see that there is lots of super positive, um, you know, vocal tone. There's lots of, you know, listen, yeah, me, you, okay. You know, there's lots of um, body language going on, lots of gestures, okay. You know, keep the energy high, sound engaged, sound enthusiastic. Um, that's the type of thing that prospective employers or students would be looking for from a demo lesson. All right. So hopefully that helped. Um, but obviously, you know, you will prep a lot better. <laughs> All right. Uh, so thank you, Diana. Good question. All right. Um, so, Larisha, I haven't had a look where to submit these videos. How many different sites are recommended to post your demo video? Oh, Larisha, as many as you want. Okay, as many as you want. You know, the more sites you use, the more likely you are to attract the attention of prospective students. Okay, so there is no limit. Um, you might decide just to go with one site, just, you know, to, to gauge the interest, or maybe just take on a couple of students to begin with. And then as you get more confident, you might decide to advertise on more sites to reach more people. Um, it's totally up to you. OK, you decide. All right. Um, so Vroomens, if I volunteer at a local school to build experience, great idea. Should I ask them for a letter of recommendation or recognition as proof of teaching hours? Oh, for sure. I mean, if you could get that, that would be amazing. Yeah, I can't think of any employer who would not like to see that information. Um, so yeah, go for it. Okay, so Larisha, 10 MB. Ah, okay. Yeah, that sounds about right. That's ringing a bell. Hmm. But yes, absolutely. Your, um, you know, your online school or online platform will give you the exact numbers. Okay. So Lala, hello. Um, my little girl is a big fan of the Teletubbies. So when I see Lala, I'm hearing the Teletubbies song. <laughs> um, so hi, I'm asking this question Deborah asked earlier. Can you say I teach Sunday school and First Holy Communion teaching or would this be a cultural hindrance? Um, I mean, Lala, I would mention it. You know, as I said before, teaching is teaching. Okay. Um, I would absolutely not avoid mentioning that. Um, yeah, go for it. You know, teaching is teaching. I would certainly mention it, no doubt. Okay. Um, let's see. So Diana, her name is Mairead. Not certain of spelling. <laughs> yes, that's right, Peter. Um, so I'm, as I said, I'm from Ireland. So we have some pretty crazy names, some pretty crazy spellings. Um, Irish is not a phonetic language. Um, so I will my spelling in the chat box. <laughs> but yes, Mairead, the pronunciation is perfect. All right. Um, 
So Flavia, thank you. Oh, you are welcome. Absolutely. Um, maybe next time we do a webinar on this topic, I will actually prepare a slightly longer demo lesson for you. Okay, thank you. Okay, um, Han, I'm only as answering questions about intro videos and demo videos. Um, anything else, you can contact Tutor Support. Um, okay, guy, that red guy, um, do we need to create a demo introduction video on the TEFL course? Um, no, Guy, absolutely not. You know, it's not a requirement of the course. Um, this is just to help you for when the time does come, okay? When you finish the course, when you have your qualification and you are ready um, to start applying for online jobs, okay? Um, so yeah, it does not need to be um, done as a course requirement, but you will have to do it at some stage when you start looking for work, just not as part of the course. All right. Okay. Um, Hector, send a ticket to Tutor Support. Remember, we're only answering questions about the topic at hand. Um, Flavia, how much time is the demo lesson live? Um, so again, Flavia, the typical one that I've ever seen has been about five or six minutes, okay? Um, remember, it's only a demo. OK, um, you're not getting paid for it. <laughs> um, so, you know, I have never come across a school that has expected a full on lesson. OK, they're only looking for a small snippet okay, of a lesson to show how you would interact and, you know, how you would approach teaching and you know how you would engage the students. So, you know, I would assume I, if I were you, I would assume five to six minutes unless I'm told something different by my prospective online employer. OK, you know, they will tell you exactly how long, what you need to teach, etc. OK, um, but yeah, five to six minutes is as long as I've ever done. All right, good. Um, so, Larisha, I was thinking to put a whiteboard with markers in the background. Why not? You know, that will certainly give the, the authentic classroom vibe. Um, you know, you could use the whiteboard. Absolutely. Um, the problem might be that, you know, you'd be doing a lot of, you know, turning. You'd be doing a lot of over and back, which might get a bit distracting. Um, I think, you know, a lot of online platforms, they have a whiteboard built in. Yeah, like they have a whiteboard on the app that you'll be able to do on screen. Um, so, you know, I do still like the idea of a whiteboard and markers in the background just to give that class vibe, but you might not necessarily be able to use it as much as you might think. Okay, but sure, why not? I'd like to see that in the background. Okay, so Hector, can I pick the topic of the demo lesson? If yes, what do you think is the most preferable subject by school to do a demo lesson about? Thanks. Mm, good question, Hector. Um, so it kind of depends, Hector. Um, a lot of the online schools will tell you, you must do your demo lesson on X topic. Yeah. In which case you have no choice. Yeah. You've got to do it. Okay. Um, if you're doing it for like an, a freelance platform, then you can choose your own demo lesson. Um, in which case, I would say go with something relatively straightforward. Okay, don't try to do too much. Remember, you only have five or six minutes. Okay, or you should be aiming for five or six minutes. So, you know, pick a grammar point that you feel very comfortable with, or pick vocabulary. Okay, you might choose like three themed words, like three words for emotions. Yeah, or, you know, three words of vocab vocabulary vocabulary related to work or relationships or family. OK, don't try to do too much. OK, keep it as simple and straightforward as you can, you know, um, really show how you would teach that point. OK, how you would be engaging, how you would transmit um, information, etc. OK. Um, vocabulary can be a nice one. You know, that's 
often more straightforward than trying to teach a grammar point or an aspect of a grammar point. So yeah, maybe focus on vocabulary if you have a choice um, and if you're not too confident about grammar, but really whatever you're comfortable with, okay? But yeah, if the school tells you that you must do X topic, well, you must do X topic. All right, thank you, Hector. Okay. Um, so, hello, Elena. What kind of short warnings always work great for demo lessons online? Uh, short warmings, <laughs> not warnings. <laughs> um, so, short warmers. Um, I would say, Elena, you can never go wrong with an image. Okay. Like if you're going to teach vocabulary related to um, relationships, for example, um, you know, you might show an image of maybe you and a friend and you and your family and say, OK, look at these pictures. Yeah. Um, who can you see in the picture? <gasps> me? Yeah, you can see me. And who do you think this other person is? Yeah. Who is it? My friend, okay. And what about this picture? It's me, yeah, but who else can you see? So, you know, you're kind of um, using the image just to jump into the topic. And once you've established that the topic is, you know, you and different people in your life, yeah, you know, you've essentially established that the class will be, or the demo will be about relationships. And then you can jump into the, the vocabulary or whatever that you're aiming to teach. Um, so you can never go wrong with images, I find. Okay, um, you know, be it for adults, be it for um, be it for young learners. You know, you can show you know pictures of cartoon characters, or you could even bring in you know dolls, teddies. You know, you cannot beat imagery, I find, when it comes to warmers and establishing content and context. All right. Thank you, Elena. Okay. So, Larisha, maybe put down thought of the day or quote or phrase related to the lesson as a warmer. Nice. Why not? Write it down on the whiteboard before the lesson starts. Yeah, absolutely, Larisha. That could be super fun. Um, yeah. Or like stick up a nice poster or something related to the topic. Yeah, absolutely. I like it. I like the way you're thinking, Larisha. You're you are definitely on the right track. Okay. Uh, Diana, would you demonstrate breakout sessions as a key tool? And if so, how would you do this? Um, so not in a demo lesson, Diana. You know, I I don't think you'd be, I don't think you'd have time to do this in a demo lesson. Um, but in online teaching, oh yeah, absolutely. Use the, use breakout rooms as much as you can. But yeah, probably not, not something you'll need to consider in a demo lesson. All right, so Vru, would it be okay to have yourself as a little thumbnail block on the screen while sharing other content on the screen? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I don't see not. Why not? Um, for example, during the presentation, yeah, I was I was that thumbnail <laughs> on the screen um, because yeah, I was showing you content on slides. But um, yeah, absolutely. Like in the main, you know, in the main stages with teacher engagement, like when you're really, you know, explaining something or demonstrating something through your facial expression or props or whatever. Yeah, you would need to make yourself bigger because, you know, you want the students looking at you while you are explaining whatever it is you're explaining. Um, and if you are teaching young learners, especially try to make yourself the biggest part of the screen as much as you can okay because it's it's your face and your smile and your voice that's really going to capture their attention all right um so yeah that would be my advice try not to keep yourself too small for too long all right thank you very good question um Okay, so I think, oh, we are out of time. 
and we are actually out of questions too. Um, I just see one more question from Hector. I don't like to leave anything unanswered related to the topic. Should a demo lesson be connected to advanced technology hardware? Will we be taught how to use technology in our future career? Um, well, honestly, Hector, you will be unable to avoid the technological aspect of teaching online. Um, but you know, it needn't be complex technology by any means, you know, it might be just you on Zoom, <laughs> okay, or you on Google Meet. Um, I would say when you start teaching online, try not to have too many bells and whistles going on because, you know, when you're starting out, you want to be able to focus on the actual teaching. Okay, so start off simple. Don't feel pressured to have a million things going on technologically. Yeah, just keep it simple until you hit your stride and then you can start adding in um, more complex technology if you wish. All right. So there we have it, guys. One hour. Our time is up, I'm afraid. Um, this platform is going to kick me out in a moment. Um, so thank you so much for coming along. Um, I hope it's been useful for you and that it's taken some of the mystery out of um, intro videos and demo lessons. Um, as I said, this webinar will be on our YouTube channel, on the TEFL Academy YouTube channel in a couple of days. So even if it's not strictly relevant to you now, please come back and rewatch when you are ready to start applying for jobs online. Um, as always, um, we would love to hear your feedback on the webinar. You know, we're constantly looking for ways to improve or new topics to address. So if you can um, take a moment to complete a short survey on the webinar, it would be very much appreciated. Um, the QR code is on screen, or I will type the address in the chat box. Um, so again, just if you have a moment to give us your thoughts, we would really appreciate it. Um, all right, everyone, go enjoy the rest of your weekend. And hopefully I will see you all again soon. Thank you so much for coming. Bye.